Lesson 82 starts on page 431, and it's about finding the greatest common factor. Now, let's just think of what we're doing here. The, what I have on the board there is greatest common factor. So a factor, that's a number that you use in multiplication, right? Like if you did 6 times 4 equals 24, the 6 and the 4 are factors in that multiplication problem. 24 is the product. So we're finding the greatest common factor of two numbers. So we'll be comparing two numbers. And what we need to do then is figure out all the factors for both of those two numbers. And then whichever ones they have in common, you pull those out. You look at the ones that they have in common. And the largest or the greatest of those numbers that they have in common, that's your greatest common factor. Let's just go ahead and do some practice problems. Let's find the greatest common factor between 10 and 15. So what we need to do here is write down all the factors for 10. And so that would be 1 and 10 and 2 and 5, right? Those would be all the factors for 10. Now 15, we'd have 1 times 15, or 1 and 15, and then 3 and 5. Those would be all the factors for 15. Okay, now let's circle the factors that they have in common. They both have 1 in common. They both have 5 in common. 5 is the greatest common factor though, right? It's larger than 1, and so that would be our answer is 5. 5 is the greatest common factor between 10 and 15. Let's do another one. Find the greatest common factor between 20 and 12. Okay, so let's just write 20s factors out. We'd have 1 and 20, 2 and 10, 4 and 5. Those would be all of the factors of 20. And 12, we'd have 1 and 12, 2 and 6, and 3 and 4. Okay, now let's circle all the factors that they have in common. They'll always have 1 in common, so let's just skip the 1. They have 2 in common, and they have 4 in common. 4 is the greatest common factor though, right? It's larger than 2, so 4 would be the greatest common factor there between those two. Now we've been learning about dividing in order to find an equivalent fraction, and you know multiplication and division are related. They're kind of similar operations, just like addition and subtraction are related. What we can do is when we have two numbers, like say we have a numerator and a denominator, we can reduce a fraction by finding the greatest common factor. Now think about why it's important to find the greatest common factor between two numbers. It has to do with reducing fractions the quickest and most efficient way. Sometimes when we're trying to reduce a fraction, we may have to do reduce it more than one time. Because on our first try, we didn't divide the numerator and denominator by the greatest common factor. And that's always what we should do, is divide by the greatest common factor. And that will give us our most reduced form of a fraction. So that's why we want to learn about the greatest common factor and how to find the greatest common factor between two numbers. Because when we have a fraction and we divide the numerator and the denominator by the greatest common factor, that will always give us the most reduced form for that fraction. And then we don't have to worry about if we have the most reduced form or not. For example, let's look at practice problem C, 10 fifteenths, and let's reduce 10 fifteenths. And we've already done in practice problem A, we found the greatest common factor for 10 fifteenths. That was 5. So we wouldn't divide both of those by anything else but 5. And so we do 5 over 5. Remember, that's the same thing as dividing by 1. And so we do the 10 divided by 5. That would equal 2. And then we do the 15 divided by 5, which is 3. And so 2 thirds as an equivalent fraction to 10 fifteenths. It's the reduced form of 10 fifteenths. We can't write 10 fifteenths in a smaller form or smaller numerator and denominator values than that. 
Let's do one more. Let's reduce 9 over 27. Okay, well first, let's find the greatest common factor between 9 and 27. So let's just go ahead and do that over to the, to the side. Eventually, you'll be able to do this part in your head sometimes, but when you need to, go ahead and write them out. So 9, we'd have 1, 9, and 3, right? Because 3 times 3 is 9. And then 27, we'd have not 1 times 27, and then 3 times 9. Okay? So they both have a 3 in common. They both have a 9 in common. 9 is the greatest common factor. So we need to divide 9 27 by 9 over 9 because that's our greatest common factor. If we would have divided by 3 over 3, that's a common factor for both of them, but that wouldn't have been our greatest common factor. We would have had to end up doing two steps to solve this problem. So 9 divided by 9, that's equal to 1. And then 27 divided by 9, that's equal to 3. So 1 third is the reduced form of 9 27 Okay, so remember how to find the greatest common factor. You find all the factors for each number that you're comparing. And then the largest or greatest common factor, that's your greatest common factor. And you can use that when you're when you're dealing with fractions to reduce the fractions you always divide by the greatest common factor and that will give you the most reduced form of that fraction okay well that's all for lesson 82